come in. Hello, it's candidate number 341, Amina Al-Yassin. Thank you. This is Damien, please can you examine his cardiovascular system? Sure, thank you. Hello Damien, my name is Amina, I'm one of the doctors here today. I'm going to just examine your chest and have a listen to your heart. Is that okay with you? Yeah. And is that okay with you, Ron? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. I'm just going to start by just taking a look around the room and just seeing if you've brought anything with you. Are you comfortable lying there? Perfect. Okay, can I start by taking a look at your hands? Can you point up like this and then down and then stick your fingers together? That's perfect, thank you. Okay, and can I have a little, little look at your hands? The other one? Perfect, and just turn them around. Thank you. And can I have a feel of your pulse here? Do you do lots of exercise? Great, your pulse is nice and slow. Okay, and now for your eyes, can you just pull down your eyelid? Perfect. And open up your mouth. Let me have a little look inside. Great, thank you. Okay, so you're at the perfect angle I want you to be at. Could you have a look at your mum and I'm just going to look at your neck? Okay, thank you very much. And now just having a look at your chest. So I can see that you've got a scar down the middle and um, one, two, three smaller scars here. Can I take a look at your back just whilst we're at it, just to see if there are any rounds on your back? No. Okay, thank you very much. Just make sure my hands are warm and then I'll just have a feel. What year are you at in school? Year 11. Oh my goodness, so do you have GCSEs right now? When's your, when are your exams starting? Oh, yeah. Have you finished them or are you in the middle of them? And you've still come, that's so helpful, oh my goodness. Do you know what you're doing next year? College. Okay, and what are you going to study? IT. IT. So you're a whiz kid, eh? Okay. Let me have a listen now to your chest. Can I have a listen? I'm just going to listen in your neck here. Okay, can you sit up for me, please? And I'm just going to take another lesson, but I want you to take a deep breath in and hold. Okay. Deep breath in and hold. Okay, now just breathe away normally. Okay, and when you're ready, a bit deep breath, please. And out. Great, and again, in. And out. Perfect. I'm just going to have a press on the bottom of your back. Okay, now you can rest back. I'm just going to bring the head of the bed down a little. Just like, are you comfortable like that? Okay. I'm just going to feel your tummy. Are you in any, any pain at all? All right, deep breaths in and out. And out, and again in, and out, and again in, out, in, out, in, out. Well done. And finally, I'm just going to press on your ankles here. That's nice, thank you. Let me just bring the head back up for you. That's noisy. Damien, thank you so much for letting me examine you and especially for coming in the middle of your exams. Best of luck. Thank you.
Thank you for asking me to examine Damien, who's a 15-year-old boy. Um, Damien appeared to be um, comfortable at rest, and he was not cyanosed, and he wasn't in any respiratory distress. He appears to be well-grown for his age, but I'd like to plot him on an appropriate growth chart. Um, I undertook a cardiovascular examination today. My most important um, positive findings were that Damien had a midline stenotomy incision, and he also had three smaller two-centimeter incisions, which may be from previous chest drain insertions. He didn't have any scars on his back. On, os um, on auscultation of his chest, I heard an ejection systolic murmur, uh, and the, heart, the second heart sound was present as well. The murmur was heard throughout the um, chest fields, but loudest in the um, pulmonary area, which is the second intercostal space on the left. There was no radiation to the carotids, and I could not feel a suprasternal thrill. Damien didn't show any signs of cardiac failure, so he wasn't short of breath. He also had clear lung fields and no hepatomegaly and no peripheral edema. So in summary, this is a 15-year-old boy with an injection systolic murmur and previous um, cardiac surgery. So this would be a residual murmur. Um, so ejection systolic murmurs are usually aortic stenosis or pulmonary stenosis. Uh, as this murmur was heard best at the left sternal edge and it did not radiate into the carotids, it's most likely to be pulmonary stenosis. However, um, I would also want to consider the possibility of an atrial septal defect as this sometimes can um, sound the same as pulmonary stenosis. And my um, other differential would be a pulmonary stenosis associated with a syndrome, such as Noonan's syndrome. Okay, so say he had an echo, which meant that he did have some pulmonary stenosis. What causes of pulmonary stenosis do you think? Um, so the different causes of pulmonary stenosis would be um, uh, uh, either congenital pulmonary stenosis or it could be a residual pulmonary stenosis after um, surgery. So he has had evidence of cardiac surgery, and that would be one of my differentials as well. Okay. And you mentioned earlier on some syndromes as well. What syndromes do you know have been associated with pulmonary stenosis? Um, one, uh, Noonan syndrome is associated with pulmonary stenosis. And um, in this syndrome, you would find that children are of short stature. They may also have a webbed neck, and they may also have um, some learning difficulties as well. But he did not have any of these features on my brief examination. Thank you very much. Okay, so Mum and Damien, do you mind if we ask a couple of questions? So the first question is for you, Damien. So how does having your heart condition affect your daily life? Um, not playing football He's right with them. He gets out of breath, but he also gets tired very easy. Um, specifically, towards the end of a term, we usually have a few days off where he's just exhausted. Okay. <clears throat> um, but apart from that, you try and keep up the best you can, and we've always said to him, if you feel tired, sit down for five minutes, then get back up and carry on. So that's what he does. Could you tell me about how you worked out that he had any difficulties with his heart? I was 19 and a half weeks pregnant and my obstetrician sent me as a precaution and that's when they found out he had single arterial drug. Okay, so they did a scan for you? Yeah, yes, yes. I had the echo cardiogram on him while being pregnant. So. Okay. And then what procedures has he had? He's Did had, you tell us which scar is from which different procedure? Uh, yeah, this one has, he's had twice now, week old. He had his first open heart surgery, and that's where he got all these three little ones from as well. They were from chest strains and external face makeup. Okay. And can you tell us what were they doing in that operation? They were putting in the conduit for the okay. trunk. Um, and he came out theatre with his chest open, which was quite scary. Um, and then from 18 months old, he had cardiac catheters, so he's got his skulls in his groin. And I think 
think we had about seven or eight of those up until he was five and or just down to six and he had his second open heart surgery and they took all the stump the stints out and they haven't been replaced yet. So and can you tell me once so when they were doing the catheters, what were they doing then? Putting the balloon in and putting the stints in. So they're either putting the stints in or stretching. Seem to go sort of return. So sometimes they put the balloon in to stretch it because they put a stint in and then back the stint. Yeah. Okay. And then the final procedure was to take all of those stents out. They took the stents out because they got in the way of the second open heart surgery okay. where they had to replace the conduit because it was narrowing and leaking. Um, and we're just waiting for when he's due another one, which is as and when, and so far so good. So, so we've lasted 10 years. Thank you so much for having us. No, thank you. Today. It's really, really useful for us. Thank you.